everyone, and welcome to the Cookbook Kitchen. I'm Eileen Avery. One Cake, 100 Desserts shows us how to create tons of delicious desserts just by mastering one basic cake recipe. Joining us today is author Carrie Fisher, and she's going to show us how to make some lip-smacking chocolate mint YPP bars. Here's what you'll need to make this fabulous dish. If you want to print out a list of ingredients and step-by-step -step instructions, head over to our website, digitalcookbook.tv. Carrie, thanks for stopping by today. What's our first step? Well, for these chocolate mint YPP bars, we're going to start with a crust. And we use these chocolate wafer cookies that have been ground in a food processor. And we're going to add some melted butter. What is YPP? <laughs> these are, YPP stands for York Peppermint Patties. Oh. And these are named in honor of my nephew. Jonah, who when he was two, he loved York Pepper and Patty. So his parents came up with this nickname, this code name, YPP, which of course he figured out pretty quickly. <laughs> Two-year-olds are a lot smarter than we give him credit for, but uh, the name kind of stuck and we all still call them that. Okay. So here we're just combining the butter and the, and the ground cookies. These are chocolate wafer cookies. You can find them in any supermarket. And you just want to moisten the crumbs because they're going to stick together and form a crust. And now we have our greased brownie pan here. You can use any kind of brownie pan, glass, metal, ceramic. Mm -hmm. I'm going to pour this in. And remember you can get a complete list of ingredients as well as step-by-step -step instructions if you go to our website which is digitalcookbook.tv. You want to arrange these in an even layer mm -hmm. and you're going to press them down and you can do this with your hand of course but you can also use, you can use a ramekin, mm -hmm. you can use a uh, metal measuring cup, anything with a flat surface. The bottom of a glass? Yeah, the bottom of a glass, sure. You just want a nice even layer and this will just make it nice and flat. Okay. And what's next? And now we want to bake this. It goes in a 350 degree oven okay. for about 10 minutes. We've got one here that's been baked. Since it's so dark, you can't really use color as a guide to when it's done, but just 10 minutes is enough to, for it to be set. And then you're going to take, we have these mini YPPs. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, they, this is enough from one bag. You'll have one or two left over. And you, what you want to do is you want to arrange them on, a cr on the crust in um, rows of six, uh, four, six rows of four. Okay, I can so do that. So if you can do that for mm -hmm. me, that'd be great. And then I'm going to start our our cake over here. And this is our basic cake recipe that you use throughout the book. Exactly, and it starts the same way as all the others. I'm going to start with egg yolks. Can I put different candies in here if I'm not a big peppermint fan? Or Absolutely. You know, recently um, I had a party at my sister's house and my sister's husband loves Reese's peanut butter cups. He's mm. a peanut butter fanatic. <laughs> so I made the same recipe. I used the chocolate crust and then I laid mini Reese's peanut butter cups on them, poured the chocolate batter over, and then I made a peanut butter frosting to put on top. That's a great idea. So it's pretty versatile. You can play around with it. So in there, there's eggs. Eggs and sugar. And sugar. You want the eggs to be at room temperature. Mm -hmm. And then you add the sugar, and you're going to mix it on high speed for about three minutes. And while that's going, we have um, milk over here. We want to add butter to our milk. OK. And this is a, this is a hot milk sponge cake. So really what we want to do, but we only want the milk to be warm, just mm -hmm. warm. We don't want it too hot. So we just heat it over low heat just until the butter is melted. Okay. You can also do this in the microwave. If you do do it on the stove, you want to make sure you use a really small pot because the milk could just, you know, burn away really quickly if the pot's too big. Okay. So while that's melting, here I've got flour and baking powder. Mm -hmm. I'm just going to kind of mix them together. Okay, this has been going for three minutes. I'm going to lower the speed to medium. Okay, and then it's going to mix an additional three minutes. The butter is melted. The butter is melted. If you could just add the vanilla. Mm -hmm. Now, meanwhile, we've also got over here some chocolate. This is semi sweet chocolate, and we're melting it over a double boiler. Mm -hmm. Again, you could also do that in the microwave. And just like with the butter, you really want to do it until it's just melted. So we've got this all mixed. We're going to mm -hmm. low it, lower the speed to low. Mm -hmm. And we're going to add our flour just a little bit at a time. We don't want to dump it all in there because then it'll require too much mixing to combine. We just whipped all this air in here. We don't want to mix it, you know, beat it out. So I think kids love this. Oh, this is great for kids. You know, it's great. It's really uh, portable, great for picnics or, or lunch boxes. There's no, like, messy frosting, so you can just wrap them in plastic wrap. And did Jonah like it? Oh, Jonah loves them, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I've got all the flour in there. We're going to keep the flour bowl because we're going to knead it again. Mm -hmm. 
I'm just gonna mix it together there. And I'm gonna just use this whisk to just kind of make sure it's all combined, just to get everything from the bottom. I'm gonna put about a third of the batter in here. How's the reaction been to your book? Oh, it's great, you know, and I love doing these events um, where I get to talk to people because when people try the recipes and try the making the cake, they're just so impressed that, you know, you can get all these desserts from one recipe. You know, a lot of times you can talk about it all you want, but people don't really realize, you know, how versatile it is until they make it themselves. Do people ever tell you horror stories about their baking Not fiascos? too much, thankfully. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we, we tested all these recipes a lot, and so uh, we hope that they're, they're foolproof and that people can uh, make them pretty easily. So we've added our, milk, our warm milk and butter to mm -hmm. this batter, and we're going to add our chocolate as well. Now, the reason we separate this and add it separately is, again, all because of the air. Uh, we really want to be gentle with the batter. We don't want to, you know, be too rough and mix out too much air. So we combine this with just a small amount of the butter, uh, with, of the batter, rather. So I'm going to add this now back to the batter. And you want to kind of pour it over the rubber spatula or whatever tool you're using. You don't want it really to sink to the bottom of the batter because, again, that's just going to make it really hard to combine. Mm -hmm. And now what we want to do is fold together these two mixtures. Mm -hmm. And how you do that is you start in the center and you kind of go around the side. And you do that while you're turning the bowl. And what you're doing now is you're combining two different mixtures and you're doing it gently so that, you know, you don't whip out too much air. You just want to do this until the two are combined, until the color is consistent. That's an easy way to tell when you're mixing two mixtures that are different colors. What happens if you do whip out the air? Well, it w you'll just end up with a little, with your cake will be a little bit um, denser. It won't be as light and fluffy. It might be a little flat. So now we've got our pan here and we're just going to Pour the batter right over the YPPs. Mm -hmm. Just want to spread it in an even layer. So what's all next? Right. So this is all set. Now it's it needs to go, to go in an oven okay. for about 30 minutes. At, at what temperature? Again, at 350 degrees. And to test when it's done, the best bet with this, you can see we have a finished one here. And it's got kind of a crackly, kind of a crisp coating on top, like, like a brownie. A brownie. Mm -hmm. Exactly. So some of our traditional methods of testing for doneness, like poking it, won't really work. So you need to use a toothpick. Okay. And you want to make sure that you only stick it into the cake, not the YPPs, oh, because yeah. then you'll get a different something else <laughs> altogether. Um, and when it's done, you want it. You want a few crumbs sticking to the toothpick because you you want this to be fudgy. You know, mm -hmm. a lot of people like their brownies slightly underdone. Mm -hmm. Try some. Let, Let me you know what you think. It. delicious. Very chocolatey on the bottom. Mm -hmm. Mint. That's wonderful. Thank you, Carrie. Thank you. <laughs> to order the One Cake 100 Desserts Cookbook, use product code C110 and call 1-866-246-1888 or shop online at digitalcookbook.tv. It was great having Carrie cook with us. If you'd like a list of step-by-step -step instructions for this or any other recipe from our series, head over to our website, digitalcookbook.tv, where quick and easy cooking is always a click away. I'm Eileen Avery, and I'll see you next time. Appliances for the Cookbook Kitchen provided by Decor. Guests of the Cookbook Kitchen enjoyed overnight accommodations at the Hyatt Regency Philadelphia Penn's Landing. For more information, please visit our website at selectondemand.com or email us at programs at selectondemand.com. Made for On Demand.